Okay, so document layout, that's what we're going to discuss today. Um, let's look at some principles. Okay, so first let's look at a document. Obviously, you cannot read the contents, right? So somebody has created a newsletter, it's a document, and there it is. Okay, not, not a bad document by any stretch of the imagination. Decent. We'd be quite proud if we created this, I guess. Feel, you know, good job done, accomplished. Okay, but then, same content, exactly the same content, but laid out slightly differently. Okay, which one do you prefer? Purple one. <laughs> yeah, the one with color. I'm colorblind, so if you say purple... <laughs> okay, the one on the right. Okay. Why? Because of the purple color, but I guess <laughs> the color challenge, it's just bolder. It's bolder. And you can see the Things stand out, right? Yeah. Things stand out. So it's a lot clearer. Okay. So it's very simple, right? You, if you have a document, you can improve it by making things stand out. There's a principle there. It's called the principle of contrast. Okay. Contrast. When you add contrast, things improve, right? The point about contrast is not that it's contrast because it's visually appealing, no. But what you're saying with contrast is, look, these two things are different, right? The question and the answer, the title, the subtitle, or, you know, the subtitle and the paragraph text. These are all different things, right? In terms of them being textual elements on a document, these are different things. When things are different, make them obviously different. Not just, you know, wimpily different, slightly different, because then somebody has to make an effort. Is that really 12 or 10? You know, sometimes you're thinking, what size of the font is it? Is it 12 or 10? Because it's 12, it means something. 10, it means something else. But if it's 15 and 10, then you don't have to go through the thought process. It's obvious, right? Without thinking, you get the difference. So when things are different, use the principle of contrast to make them obviously different. Okay? So you can bring in differences in many different ways. You can change the color, you can change the size, you can change the font, or you can change several of these. Okay? So then somebody looking at it clearly knows that's different from this. I mean, subconsciously they'll get it. So that whole process, the mental load you're putting on them goes away. Okay? So then once the mental load for all this stuff goes away, they're able to focus on what you're trying to tell them rather than wasting their cognitive energy in doing these other things. Okay, so that's the idea here. So that's the first principle, the principle of contrast. Okay, notice that these two things have exactly the same content, meaning nonsense content, some junk content. They have exactly the same content, but only differences in how they're laid out. The principle of contrast has been used to make it more effective. Okay, now think back to our uh, documents that we looked at earlier, right? So between the third document that you saw and the first original document, there's a lot of difference in contrast. Okay, so to some extent, when you say things stand out, they stand out because of contrast. Okay, so that's a very useful principle. When you're creating anything, just try to think about, okay, what am I trying to communicate? What are the different elements here? How can I make them look obviously different? That will immediately give you a jump in uh, quality of your document, readability, understandability of your document. Okay, so that's one example. Another example, just for contrast, I want to give two examples. So somebody made something, you know, rules of life, whatever stuff they made. So that's the first one. Okay, contrast is sort of, it's there, but it's very, uh, very subtle kind of a contrast. Okay, so you can improve the contrast by adding, you know, making the title very different from the rest. So a slightly better contrast, or you can make the contrast Serious, okay? And you see a progressive improvement, even in such a simple doc. Not that the first document was anything difficult to understand. It's hardly a document. But this makes it, uh, you know, a lot more easy to understand, okay? So again, that's the principle of contrast. First principle, contrast. Remember, I'm going to teach you four principles. You won't forget them, okay? Second principle, <coughs> okay, this is... Presumably, William Shakespeare's resume, okay? So, uh, so you've got some stuff, it is like a resume. And this is also applying a principle. Clearly, you can see the principle of contrast, 
Okay, you can see the principle of contrast being applied here. You know, different things have different typefaces. They all stand out quite differently. In fact, I think when you looked at it, you were pretty quickly able to grasp what is in the document, right? As opposed to what it would have been if the contrast was less. So that's good. The principle of contrast is applying. But there's another principle also that's very important when you create documents, and that is just as different, you know, things which are different should be obviously different, the things which are the same should also be obviously the same. Right? Otherwise, also it causes confusion in people's minds. Right? And that is called the principle of repetition. You repeat, you know, when several, for example, if you take any standard book, right, the chapter titles all have the same font, page numbers all have the same font, the subheading, you know, there is a repetition there and the repetition is also useful because it tells you what you're looking at. Based on prior experience, it tells you what you're looking at is the chapter title, what you're looking at is the subheading or the subtitle within the chapter, etc, etc. Okay. So also the formatting elements are repeated throughout documents to tell you these are all the same thing. Okay. So you're communicating through the formatting elements itself. Okay. So once again, it reduces the burden on the reader to make the effort to understand what am I looking at. Okay. So that is the principle of repetition. So here what has been repeated is, you know, the same font for uh, the, you know, the detail points, the same font for the, the, the topics and so on. Okay, so that is a principle of repetition. Second principle, contrast, repetition. Here's another example of repetition. Repetition doesn't always have to mean that you're repeating exactly the same thing. You could be repeating some things, but just adding color. For example, this, is, you know, looks like a, a poster in some kind of a resort or something, right? So they wanted to add some, a little bit of color and a little bit of fun to it. So although they are repeating some of the elements, they are choosing to make it in different colors and so on, okay? It's still repetition, not going to confuse you, but it adds a little, uh, you know, uh, lightheartedness to the thing, okay? So that's the principle of repetition. Now comes the third principle, okay? So this is a, the cover of a, a book by, of presumably Robert uh, Burns' poems. Okay, looks like a decent cover. Nothing wrong with it. But when you're looking at a document, right, there are elements in the document that guide your eye on how to scan the document. Right, it's it's all implicit. When you look at a document, your eyes go a certain way. Okay, that's because of some of the elements in the document. Okay, and what we want to do is to lay out the document in such a way that the person's eye flows smoothly through the document. Okay, and you usually create that by using the right kind of alignment in a document. Okay, alignment plays a very important role. Okay, so here what kinds of alignments do you see? Centering here and left aligned there. Okay. There's a conflict between the two alignments, right? So when you look at it, how do your eyes flow? That part is easy to take in. Because of the left alignment, it gives, gives you a guidance. Okay, each line is beginning here. It gives you that uh, fixity. So you go look at it, you know how to read it. Automatically, your eye takes that in. This part is very difficult to read. I would be surprised if you actually read it. Right? It's very difficult. Why? Because, because it's center aligned. Every line starts at a different position. It's a lot of effort for the eye. Many times what happens, you see, not reading that. Okay? So center alignment has that, has that problem. You don't read it. Okay? Of course, if it's just one sentence, it's okay. It's not a problem. I'm not saying you should never use center alignment. But when you're using center alignment, watch out for this effect that it strains the, strains the eye. Okay? So it's difficult to read. Whereas, if you change the alignment, differently, then again it becomes uh, much more easy to read. Okay, so now they took all this stuff here and put it here and immediately you see that this is so much easier than that to read. Of course, you know, it's, it's blurred to begin with, but other than that, this is just a lot easier. Why? Because the eye has a, an anchor on the right hand side and, you know, you go there and of course it's small text. So even if you fix your eye on the right hand side, you actually end up reading the whole thing. It's a lot easier to read. Okay. So that is the importance of alignment. Of course, here you, there is a conflict in alignment. 
because some are, some things are left aligned, right left aligned, some things are right aligned, but it doesn't conflict too much because they are in different parts of the screen of the page, and also there's this line which kind of invisibly ties the two together, right? Because it's left, things are left aligned to this line, and these things are right aligned to the same line, so the line is sort of a unifying factor there, and it overall there's a pleasing effect makes it easy for you to scan the document and take in what is there. Okay, so that's the principle of alignment. Very important. Uh, we usually, we don't pay attention to these things, but you'll see when you start paying attention, you'll see, oh, I can change that. Especially slide layout. You know, PowerPoint slide layout, alignment is very, very important. You put in so many different things. If you just align them right, makes it so much more pleasing. Okay, so that's the principle of alignment. Let's see some examples here. Just three business cards, all with different kinds of alignment. Okay, so in the first one, you've got, you know, center alignment, left alignment, right alignment, everything is combined. Okay, second one, the whole thing is center aligned. In the last one, there's a complete right alignment. Okay, also <coughs> another principle which we'll talk about later. So to me, I find this the most easy to capture all the information that, that I want, right? Because it's just easy to, to read. Everything comes to you very quickly, rather than those two things, <clears throat> okay? But there's one more principle also that's being applied here. That's why it's not only because of alignment. There's another principle that we are coming into. So that's a principle of alignment, okay? Now, one other important point I'd like to uh, make while I'm here is see if you look here the name of the principle repetition I had it in black bold kind of text right but when I went to the next thing Robert Burns here okay I didn't put that alignment in black right because the font is very similar to the Robert Burns font here it's not the same obviously it's quite similar and if I put that also in black, then it would be a little confusing. It would sort of seem to imply that it has something to do with the title. Okay? And then somebody will have to look at it carefully. See, all these things are just a microsecond of a glance here and there, but it's distraction. So I said, let me make it completely different. Chose a different color for it. Okay? Don't ask me to name the color. I chose a different color. That's all I can say at this point. Okay? So I chose a different color so you know it's obviously different. Okay? So that's what this is. So that's why, uh, you know, so here you are, I'm also using contrast in that sense. Okay. So we've looked at three principles. We'll come to the final principle and then you'll see why you'll never forget it. Okay. Uh, so the final principle, look at this here. First Friday reading club, winter reading schedule, a lot of things. Okay. So what problems do you see with this? If you see any problems? Looks nice, nice and festive, nice font. Okay, one thing is it's hard, very difficult to read. Did you actually feel like reading it? No, right? One problem is the center alignment. You know, you, you, you probably fall down faint or something. You just try to read the whole thing. Your eye is just dancing all over the place. Okay, that's one big problem. We can fix that. Any other problem? Okay, again, you could say nothing stands out because it's just you know, one big mass of information, yeah? Uh -huh. I was just going to say it's a lot of words, like it could be shorter. Right, it could be shorter, a lot of words, but even apart from that, suppose you were to use exactly the same words, suppose, right, to create something else, because here nothing, it's not clear. I mean, how many different things are they talking about here? There's two, three, four, you know, four paragraphs or five paragraphs? So much effort, right? It's all cognitive effort, you'll say, I'm not attending this event, whatever it is, okay? Whereas, if you change that, same information, organized differently. Okay, it's exactly the same, no words are different. They're all the same, it's exactly the same information. You can immediately see, first of all, alignment has been improved. Okay, contrast is improved, right? So for each event, you know, there's a title, Winter's Tale. Okay, so Winter's Tale. So they've taken that element. So immediately you look at it, you say, okay, these are the things that are happening. There are, uh, you know, uh, three different things that are happening, etc., etc. 
Okay, so contrast, alignment, repetition, they've all been applied. But there's another principle that's also been applied here, which is called the principle of proximity. Right? That is when things are related, put them close together. Okay? You already saw it. Okay. When things are don't just just keep going. When things are related, you know, put them close together. When things are unrelated, separate visually. Okay? So related things put them close together. Unrelated things separate them out. Right? So that it becomes easy for somebody to just look at it and immediately get what's going on. Right? Otherwise it's confusing. This sentence or this part belongs to that point or the next point. Right? You don't want to have that kind of confusion going on. That's the principle of proximity. Right? So things which are related put them close together. So what are the four principles? Contrast, repetition, alignment, proximity. Right? Will you forget this? No? Why? <laughs> the first four letters. The first letters. Contrast, repetition, alignment, proximity. Okay, so when you're creating a document, all you have to do is write some crap. <laughs> and you get a good document. Okay, so that's the uh, principle of, uh, you know, document layout. Right? In fact, if you search on the web for crap principle, you get a lot of documents. It's a well-known principle, not something I made up. Right? Not smart enough to do that. Okay, so check, check this and try to keep practicing it whenever you're creating documents. Okay. Any questions or any comments, anything? So the point is this, the point is, you know, many times we look at documents and we find them appealing, right? You look at posters, you find them appealing. But for the most part, that appeal comes from the application of these principles, okay? So it, you can't say that it's, oh, they have a sense of art, they're artistic people, uh, etc. Nothing like that, they're applying some principles that they've learned, that they've been taught, okay? So we can also create nice looking documents very easily. Okay? And I think this applies a lot when you're making PowerPoint presentations also. Your PowerPoint slides. Because many times I find people, uh, you know, creating PowerPoint slides where even alignment is not good. I mean, I'm not saying not good in terms of mixing up different, no, not even that. You know, the, they've got several bullet points. One bullet point is here. The other bullet point is standing here. You know, all those kinds of things. So, you know, simple things like that. So pay attention to all of these things and your documents will become a lot better. It doesn't have to take a lot of time to do this stuff. Okay, it's very easy to do. In, in 10 minutes, you'll see major improvements in what you're doing. Okay, so any questions, comments, anything? Okay, so the principle is really, uh, effectively all this boils down to is, use all of these principles, don't make me think. Right? Just give it to me the way it is. Okay, that's the idea here. Okay, so now that we've looked at this, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, first stop the presentation here, stop recording.